Hi, are you ready for some bedtime stories from Wood Library? Bernard and I are ready and leave a comment so we know you're watching. Can we get started? Let's. Our first story, well, I'm hoping you've already had dinner because it's about eating or maybe not eating. This is called, I Will Never Not Ever Eat a Tomato. It's written by Lauren Child and illustrated by her as well and published by Candlewick Press. Would you eat a tomato? I know I would. I have this little sister, Lola. She's small and very funny. And sometimes I have to keep an eye on her. Sometimes mom and dad ask me to leave Lola her dinner. This is difficult because she is a very fussy eater. Lola won't eat carrots, of course. She says carrots are for rabbits. I say, well, what about peas? And Lola says, peas are too small and too green. Now one day I played a good trick on her. Lola was sitting at the table waiting for her dinner and she said, I do not eat peas or carrots or potatoes, mushrooms or spaghetti or eggs or sausages. I do not eat cauliflower or cabbage or baked beans or bananas or oranges. And I am not fond of apples or rice or cheese or fish sticks. And I absolutely will never, not ever eat a tomato. My sister hates tomatoes. And I said, well, that is lucky because we're not having any of those things. We are not going to eat any peas or carrots or potatoes or mushrooms or spaghetti or eggs or sausages. There will be no cauliflower or cabbage or baked beans or bananas or oranges. We don't have any apples or rice or cheese or fish sticks and certainly no tomatoes. Lola looked at the table. Then why are those carrots there, Charlie? I don't ever eat carrots. Oh, I said, oh, you think these are carrots? Oh, well, they're not carrots. These are orange twiglets from Jupiter. They look just like carrots to me, said Lola. But how can they be carrots, I said. Carrots don't grow on Jupiter. Well, that's true, said Lola. Well, I might just try one, if they're all the way from Jupiter. Mmm, not bad, she said, and she took another bite. Then Lola saw some green peas. I don't eat peas, said Lola. And I said, oh, those are not peas. Why, of course they're not. Those are green drops from Greenland. They're made out of green and they fall from the sky. But I don't eat green things, said Lola. Oh, goody, I said, then I'll have your share. Green drops are so incredibly rare. Well, maybe I'll nibble just one or two. Oh, said Lola, quite tasty. Next, Lola saw a potato. I will not eat potatoes, so don't even try. Not even mashed, she said. Oh, this isn't a mashed potato. Why, people often think that, but no, this is a cloud fluff from the pointiest peak of Mount Fuji. Oh, said Lola. Well, in that case, a large helping for me, please. I love to eat a cloud. Charlie, she said, those look like fish sticks to me and I would never eat a fish stick. I know that. These are not fish sticks. 
These are ocean nibbles from the supermarket under the sea. Mermaids eat them all the time. Oh, I, I went to that supermarket one time with Mom. Yes, I, I know the ones. I think I've had them before, Lola said, gobbling. Are there any more? And then she said, Charlie, would you pass me one of those? And I said, what? One of those? You know what those are? Lola said, yes, Charlie, one of those. And I couldn't believe my eyes because guess what she was pointing at? Tomatoes. And I said, are you sure? Really? One of these? And she said, yes, of course. Moon squirters are my favorite. You didn't think they were tomatoes, did you, Charlie? What do you think? <laughs> Well, let's do a finger play about something you might eat. I've got five little hot dogs that are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So one little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now there are no little hot dogs cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, Let's maybe have something that might be a little more tasty for all of you. This is a book about Froggy, and it's Froggy Bakes a Cake. It's written by Jonathan London and illustrated by Frank Ramikowitz. I always tumble over his name. And this book is published by Grosset and Dunlop. Now, it was Froggy's mother's birthday. Froggy was outside making mud pies. Froggy, called his father. What? Help me bake a cake for your mother. Oh, please, cried Froggy. I want to do it all by myself. So Froggy flopped into the kitchen. Flop, flop, flop. You'll need flour, said his father, and sugar and chocolate. I know, cried Froggy, and he pushed his chair against the counter and climbed on up. He took down the flour, he took down the sugar, he took down all the chocolate candy his mother had hidden since Halloween. We need lots of flour and sugar, said Froggy, and he dumped a large bag of flour and a whole box of sugar into a big yellow bowl. We need lots and lots of chocolate, said Froggy, and he dumped in 10 handfuls of chocolate-covered flies. His favorite. We need milk, too, said Froggy's father. I know, cried Froggy, and he flopped to the fridge. Flop, flop, flop. And he grabbed a carton of milk. Oops! It dropped on his foot and spilled. We'll need eggs and butter, cried his father. I know, cried Froggy, and he snatched a carton of eggs. Whoops, he only broke four or five. And just one stick of butter fell on the floor. Don't forget the baking powder, said his father. I know, cried Froggy, and he climbed up and took down the baking powder. Then he cracked seven eggs into the bowl. Crack, 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 crack and only a few shells fell in. Then he put the butter in, boop, and he poured in the milk, boop, 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 and finally he dumped in, oh no, the whole
box of baking powder. Shoop. Time to mix it all together, said his father. I know, cried Froggy, and he stirred and slopped it and mixed it and plopped it, and then he dumped all the gooey cake batter into the cake pan, and he shoved the cake into the oven, and he sang, Boogly, boogly, burbly bake. I make and I bake and I wake for the cake. Froggy, called his father. What? While you wait for the cake to bake, help me blow up the balloons. So Froggy helped blow up the balloons. He blew and he blew and he blew and he blew and pop. Now, said his father, help me set the table. Froggy helped set the table. Oops, he knocked over the lemonade and the paper party tablecloth got all wet. Froggy, called his mother. What? What smells so good? It's a surprise, yelled Froggy, and he flopped back to the kitchen. Flop, flop. Come and get it, hollered Froggy. Froggy's father and mother flopped in and oh my goodness, they slid across the buttery floor. And Froggy said, are you ready? And he opened the oven door. Yikes, the cake exploded, yelled Froggy's father. Oops, cried Froggy looking more red in the face than green. Too much baking powder, I guess. It's good, though, said his father, licking his fingers. Wait, cried Froggy. I'll be right back. And off he went. Flop, flop, flop. Happy birthday, Mom, he said. And he handed her a fresh mud pie with a candle in it. I made it all by myself. Oh, Froggy, said his mother. This is the best um, birthday pie I've ever had. Oh, what a mess, said Froggy's father. Let's go out to celebrate. Great, said Froggy. Yes, said Froggy's mother. And together, they leapfrogged all the way to the bakery. Flop, flop. And I bet the cake from the bakery was delicious. Well, can you shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. And can you clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap, clap, clap your crazies out, clap. Clap, clap your crazies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out? Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out. Stretch, stretch, stretch your stretchies out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you stand up? Because it's time to jump, jump, jump your jiggles out. Jump, jump. Jump your jiggles out, jump, jump, jump your jiggles out and wiggle your waggles away. Can you yawn? Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out, yawn. Yawn your sleepies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, can you shake? Shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out, shake, shake, shake your sillies out and wiggle your waggles away. Well, usually after you have dinner, which I hope you've already had, and before you go to bed, it might be time to take a bath. And this is a new book at the library called I'm Terrified of Bath Time. It's written by Simon Rich, with illustrations by Tom Toro, and it's published by Little Brown and & Company. And it's so new, we 
We haven't even attached the cover yet. Oh, look at that bathtub. Do you think he's afraid? I think he might be. Can I tell you a secret? I'm terrified of bath time. Usually being a bathtub is fun. I just hang out all day with my friends, sink and toilet. But then each night I hear those dreaded words. It's bath time and the fear sets in. It's the same every time. First, a scary giant comes into my room and he twists my eyeballs. And I get so freaked out, I shoot water out of my nose. Oh, you would not believe how weird it feels. I look to sink and toilet for support, but those two are no help. Sorry, bud, we're staying out of this, says Sink. Yeah, I've got problems of my own, said Toilet. And when I'm full of water, I start to panic because I know what's coming next. You. Listen, I know you've got your own issues with bath time, but compared to me, you've got it easy. You can splash, you can flail, and all I can do is try to survive. Sometimes you kick my nose, ouch. And sometimes you scream in my ear, Ooh. And one time, you pooped. That was a low point for both of us. The fact is, you have all the power in this relationship, which is why I'm asking you for a favor. Tonight, please have mercy on me. Tonight, please be kind. Instead of screaming in my ear, try singing me a song. I love songs. And instead of kicking my nose, try giving me a makeover. I'm overdue. And instead of pooping, well, to be honest, pretty much anything would be better. It would be an improvement over that. Bath time doesn't have to be scary. Why, with your help, I bet we can even make it sort of fun. We'll have such a good time, we'll make sink and toilet jealous. And I'll be so happy. I'll shoot water out of my nose. It will still feel weird. But in a good way. The end. I bet you never thought about your bathtub when you were in there, did you? Mm -hmm. Well, I've got five little monkeys who were jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So four little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So then three little monkeys are jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor. The doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. 
that there's two little monkeys who were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. And that leaves one little monkey who is jumping on the bed. When she fell off, oh, she bumped her head. So her mama called the doctor. The doctor said, hmm, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So there are no more monkeys to jump on the bed. But what about a little bunny? This is called Little Bunny Sleepless Night. It's written by Carol Roth, and it's illustrated by Valery Gorbachev, and is published by North South Books. Little Bunny had no brothers or sisters. He had his very own room with his very own bed. But sometimes he got lonely. So lonely, he couldn't fall asleep. So one night he thought, what I need is the company of a good friend. So he hopped next door to his good friend Squirrel. May I sleep here tonight? He asked. Oh, of course, Squirrel said as he welcomed him in. Well, tucked all snug in bed next to Squirrel, Little Bunny thought how lucky he was not to be alone. Good night, Squirrel, said Little Bunny. Good night, Little Bunny, answered his friend. Well, falling asleep was easy, but staying asleep was not. Little Bunny was soon awakened by crunch, 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 What's that noise? He asked as he sat up in bed. Oh, it's just me cracking acorns, said Squirrel. I always have a little snack in the middle of the night. Oh, well, thanks for having me, but I can't sleep with all that noise, said Little Bunny. So Little Bunny left and hopped some more until he reached his good friend Skunk. May I sleep here tonight? Oh, yes, yes, a hundred times yes, shouted Skunk. No one has ever asked to sleep over before. Well, afraid little bunny might change his mind, Skunk quickly pulled him inside. This is fun, Skunk said as they got into their beds. And shortly after they fell asleep, but not for long, because little bunny was soon awakened by a terrible smell. What smells? He asked as he jumped up. Oh, I'm afraid I do, said Skunk. I forgot someone else was in my room and I got scared and I, I sprayed. Oh, well, thanks for having me over, but I can't sleep with that smell, said Little Bunny. Skunk understood. So Little Bunny left and hopped some more until he reached his good friend, Porcupine. May I sleep here tonight, he asked. Oh, certainly, said Porcupine. You take my bed and I'll sleep on the floor. Oh, yippee, shouted Little Bunny as he climbed into Porcupine's bed and bounced around with excitement. Ouch, he screamed. What do you have in here? Oh, it's just my quills, said Porcupine. I lose some every now and then. Oh, well, thanks for having me, but I can't sleep with all these prickles. So Little Bunny left, and he hopped some more until he reached his good friend, Bear. May I sleep here tonight, he asked. Why, sure. Make yourself at home, said Bear. Well, by now, Little Bunny was so tired, he just curled up on the floor and went right to sleep. But very soon after, Little Bunny was awakened by a loud, rumbling noise. Oh no, it's thunder, he thought. But it wasn't thundering at all. It was his friend Bear snoring. Oh, I can't sleep with that snoring, said Little Bunny. 
So he left, and he hopped some more until he reached his good friend Owl. May I sleep here tonight? he asked Owl. Oh, why, yes, if you want to, said Owl. Just follow me. Well, an exhausted little bunny went right to sleep, but soon he was awakened by a bright light shining in his eyes. Put that light out, he shouted. Oh, I can't, said Owl. I stay up reading every night. That's how I got to be so wise. Oh, well, since you're so wise, could you please tell me how I'm ever going to get some sleep, asked little bunny. Oh, that's easy, said Owl. Just go back home where you belong. Well, little bunny took his wise friend's advice. Too tired to hop, he dragged himself home. Oh, his bed never looked so good to him before. He jumped right in. How wonderful, he said to himself as he snuggled down. No crunching noise, no terrible smell, no prickly quills, no snoring, and no bright lights. Just me, by myself, and peace and quiet. Now I can fall asleep. And that's just what Little Bunny did. There's nothing like your own bed, right? All right. Well, let's see. Hmm. We should do another finger play. And I think it's too soon. Well, no, maybe it isn't too soon to do something with some bubble gum. Do you have some bubble gum there? Why don't you reach in your pocket? Or pretend you have a pocket and reach in it and pull out your piece of pretend bubble gum. Unwrap it and pop it in your mouth and chew it up until it's all soft and squishy. Put your hand out. You know what comes next, right? I'll count to three. That's where your gum goes. One, two, three. Spit your gum in your hand, clap your hands together, and now, oh wow, your hands are stuck together with sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. Time to throw it in the trash. Well, I think we should have our story on the flannel board. And actually, it's a song tonight. We were talking about fruit at the beginning, like tomatoes and making a cake. But you know when it's cold outside, I always think a good soup is a thing to make. 
So we're going to be having Mrs. O'Sullivan make some soup and she's calling it her stew. So here is Mrs. O'Sullivan. And here is her big soup pot. Well, Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O. And in this stew, she put some potatoes, E-I-E-I-O. With a munch munch here and a munch munch there, here a munch, there a munch, everywhere a munch munch. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O. And in that stew, she put some carrots, E-I-E-I-O. With a crunch, crunch here and a crunch, crunch there. Here a crunch, there a crunch, everywhere a crunch, crunch. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O. And in that suit stew, she put some baby peas, E-I-E-I-O. With a goo-goo here and a goo-goo there. I think because they're baby peas. Here a goo, there a goo, everywhere a goo-goo. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O. And in that stew, she put some corn, E-I-E-I-O. With a mmm here and a mmm there. Here at mmm, there at mmm, everywhere at mmm, mmm. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew, E-I-E-I-O. And in that stew, she put some onions. E-I-E-I-O. Have you ever cut onions? They make you cry. So she had with a boo-hoo here and a boo-hoo there. Here a boo, there a hoo, everywhere a boo-hoo. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew. E-I-E-I-O. And in that stew, she put some turnips. E-I-E-I-O, with a chop-chop here and a chop-chop there. Here a chop, there a chop, everywhere a chop-chop. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew. E-I-E-I-O, and in that stew she put some beef. E-I-E-I-O, with a choo-choo here and a choo-choo there. Here a chew, there a chew, everywhere a choo-choo. Mrs. O'Sullivan made Irish stew. Yum, 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 mmm, mmm, delicious. Well, let's finish up with a sleepy story from Sandra Boynton. This is Dino Snores, and it's published by Workman Publishing. Well, when the sun has gone down, and it has, and the blue stars appear, then the dinosaurs know that their bedtime is near. So they all clean their teeth and their sweet faces too. And then they wriggle and stretch, just like dinosaurs do. Their pajamas are cozy. They all put them on. And then they yawn, and they yawn, and they yawn, and they yawn. Now they all settle down in a dinosaur heap. They all close their eyes, and they all fall asleep. And soon they are dreaming, our dinosaur friends, and I'm afraid this is when all the snoring begins. Honk, shoo, honk, shoo, honk, shoo, honk, shoo. That's how dinosaurs snore. The snoring goes on and on and on through the night. Oh, they never stop snoring till the first morning light. I like all the dinos. But I just want to say, thank goodness those dinosaurs live far, far away. Well, those are our stories for tonight. I'm glad you don't live too far, far away. Or at least if you do live far, far away, that you can join us for this program Wednesday nights. So we'll be back next week, right, Bernard? And we'll look forward to seeing you then. <laughs>